Hey guys, TechFucker here, and in today's video we are going to go through some Xbox 360 hidden gems. So I've got a small stack of games to talk about here, not bad at all. As I say, I have played all of these, so it's not just me saying, you guys should try out games I've heard other people say. <laughs> they are good. Um, these ones I've picked up quite recently, some I've had for a while, and I'll explain to you why I think these are hidden gems and I think under the radar. So to begin with, the first game I am going to talk about is Under Defeat HD. So what Under Defeat HD is, this is a shoot 'em up so this is like, I don't know if you count it as a built hell one, but it's, it's pretty tough, I will say that at the very least, but yeah, as I say, my copy is in German, but the game plays perfectly fine in English, so that's all you need to know, but yeah, um, it's got two modes, an original mode and an arcade mode, so the original mode kind of gives you that tape like view, the straight line view or whatever you want to call it, and the no, original, the new mode even, the arcade one I think it is, I think it's original mode that I was just talking about there. But the arcade mode, um, that one gives you a full screen and to be honest I prefer playing that way. But um, yeah, the game itself is very fun and I highly recommend it because everyone always talks about Akai Katana, Death Smiles and whatnot. And out of the cave shooters, I've not seen this one focused on nearly as much. There is also another one called Dodon Patchy, which I do have on the way, so who knows, you might see that in a future Hidden Gems video. But in terms of this, yeah, it's a really good one, lots of, you know, it's really fun. Um, level variety is pretty uh, solid as well. Um, it is mostly army based, I think it is World War II focused. But yeah, definitely check this one out, it's not too expensive either. Um, it'll probably run you about £20 at the minute. Uh, I bought mine off eBay and it has been shouted out recently by another YouTuber called Retro Ghetto. Hence that's where I bought it, you know, off of the recommendations. Like, let's give this game a shot. Alright, so next game I'm going to talk about is Lord of the Rings Conquest. So what Lord of the Rings Conquest is, is it's like a third person action game. Quite fun. I wouldn't say it's like Dynasty Warriors, but it's got that kind of vibe to it. That's what I would describe it. This game is really fun local co-op as well. I used to play it all the time with my lot brothers when we were kids. I think this game definitely went under the radar in terms of like good Lord of the Rings games. A lot of people always talk about like the PS2 GameCube ones, or in the original Xbox ones. Like the Two Towers, Third Age and that, but I never really see Conquest mentioned. Again, it's made by Pandemic who, you know, have some notable titles under their belt as well. Um, yeah, EA, you know, they did a win with this one. But yeah, in terms of Lord of the Rings Conquest. This one isn't too expensive either, so if you want to pick this up, it'll run you like five, ten pounds from the last time I checked. It may have changed now. If it has, I will let you know. But yeah, in terms of that one, you know, really fun, uh, you know, action third person like combat type of game. I highly recommend checking it out if you get the chance. The next game in my list, one I've been playing a lot recently, and I played it. <laughs> I only got it recently as well. Red Racer Unbounded. So you hear people always talk about, you know, the Burnout series, you know, how those games are great and whatnot, and, well, they are very great and very fun. You also hear people talk a lot about Need for Speed and whatnot. Ridge Racer is, although a popular series, I never hear anyone talk about Unbounded. With Unbounded, this one has, you know, several different types of races you can compete in. So you get, like, Demolition Races, uh, Domination, sorry, Domination Races, they are. Pretty much, with on the domination races, what you do, the disc is actually still in my system by the way, I've been playing it recently, but um, yeah, domination races, you race through other racers, you try to take shortcuts and whatnot. I'll admit, I think the AI is a little bit cheap though, there's definitely some rubber banding there, but uh, yeah. <laughs> the time trials are fun, The you get some uh, races where you just kind of, you know, boost along, can't remember what they're called, but um, yeah, those ones are fun as well. So there is a bit of a difficulty spike, I would say, with this one, with um, the AI with some of the other racers. But overall, it is a fun time, and I do recommend you check this out if you, you know, have a few pounds to spare. It's only four pounds on the 360. Um, it'll run you around that on the PS3 as well, and it's also available on Steam and is Steam Deck compatible from what I've read. So I recommend it if uh, you get a chance. It's a good alternative to say like Burnout or anything like that, as it does have like the crash modes and whatnot, it's pretty fun. And as I say, for a few pounds, you can't go wrong with that one. On the topic of racing games, the next one I'm going to talk about today is Formula One Race Stars. So you may be wondering why Formula One Race Stars, is this just another sports game? And I mean, it is a sports game to a degree, but no, this is like a Mario Kart-esque type game. So this is, again, a good alternative to Mario Kart if you just want something different in that similar style, if you play Crash Team Racing to death. And if you've also played like Sonic and All Stars Racing, this is a good kart racer and I cannot stress that enough. It's also made by Codemasters. So I'm sure they did like um, some other racing games. I think it's like Micro Machines or something along those lines. 
But yeah, in terms of um, F1 race stars, again, local multiplayer is really good in this one. The item selection is fun. And if you're into the sport, there's something here for you as it's still, you know, some of the racers are still there to this day. You know, I mean, everyone knows Lewis Hamilton, right? <laughs> I'm not an F1 guy and my brothers would probably slaughter me if they heard me saying that, but hey ho. Um, with F1, as I say, not my kind of thing, but the racing game here is really good. And it is a good kart racer, as I say, if you want something different that is an alternative to Mario Kart and you have a 360 hooked up. This one, again, will run you very little money. I think it's like five pounds the last time I checked it as well. So yeah, highly recommend that one if you get into it enough. The final game in today's Hidden Gems video will be Transformers Devastation. So with this game, again, another Platinum Games uh, title. You'll see the logo up there. But with um, Transformers Devastation, this one, it's not the greatest game in the world by any means, but this again is I would say it's like a good mix of like Vanquish, you know, Bayonetta, some good elements there and it's done in the classic Transformers style. Again, I remember like the first boss was like, I think it was Grimlock where you fight him in the big arena in the city. Tons of fun. Cannot beat that. Um, again, fast paced fun action because you can run around and drive as the Transformers and then you can also explore as, you know, the full body like Autobots and whatnot. I, I remember playing as um, Optimus Prime throughout it, you know, zooming along and then you've got the third person shooter elements where you're shooting up enemies and fighting them. I think there is like fist to fist combat as well, so that's what I'm saying, this is a good mix of everything Platinum. And if you're a Platinum Games fan, like your Bayonetta, your Vanquish, you know, they're going to be the ones I refer to here, then you'll definitely like Transformers Devastation, I would say. As I say, it's it does get a bit repetitive with Devastation. It's not the greatest like third person action game ever, but with um, the 360 there is a good you know range of Transformers games. And the ones that people usually talk about is like the War and Fall for Cybertron games. But I cannot stress how good um, Devastation is. It's not as good as those games I would say, but it's something that is definitely worth your time checking out if you wish one another third person like action shooter type game to play. This one's def- if you've got young kids that want to get into that genre and like Transformers, this game is the one for you. And it only runs you about £10 as well, so again, not a game that will break the bank. So if you're gaming on a budget, Devastation is something to consider. The first game we are going to talk about today is Arcana Hearts 3. So this is a fighting game in the, on the Xbox 360, also available on like PlayStation 3 and Steam. Um, yeah, so you can still buy this today on Steam if you want to play it that way. However, it is a 2D fighting game made by Arc Systems. So yeah, Arc Systems works. <laughs> so think of it as an alternative to something like Guilty Gear, for example. But yeah, um, pretty much what the catch for this game is, you know, you're playing as an all-female cast, you know, it's some um, very nice artwork on it as well. You'll see on the case here that the, you know, there's a wide range of characters available. I think there's around 20 or so, something like that. Back of the box says 23 girls, 23 powers combined for over 500 different character types. So again, this is a very unique game, not one that I've heard talked about a lot, and it is very highly reviewed as well. So this is definitely a game you should check out if you're looking for an alternate fighter, you know, from something that isn't Street Fighter or Tekken, because at the end of the day, everyone's played those, but this is something new, something different that you may not have tried yet, so definitely give it a shot if you have the opportunity to do so. Now we move on to game number two over here, and what else have I got other than Import Tuner Challenge? So Import Tuner Challenge, developed by Genki, published by Ubisoft. You may be wondering, what's the um, what's the catch for this game? And what I would say to that is the fact that you get to like tune up the car. It's kind of in the name Import Tuner Challenge. You customize the cars and you go on races and such. You know, you've got a range of different car brands as well, Mitsubishi, Toyota, and that. So you can use real world cars, which again is always a perk in these types of games. Just makes it more interesting. But yeah, this is also an exclusive. So you'll see the only on Xbox 360 <laughs> sticker right on the case there. But yeah, this is something that you should definitely try out for sure. As again, there's so many different options for you to, you know, make make do with within the game. Um, the back of the case here also mentions there is how many parts? I just read it, over five million custom import car combinations. So yeah, you've got a lot of different things to work with here. And that's what makes this game interesting. Is it the best racer in the world by any means? I wouldn't say so. There, there is better available. But if you are playing the 360 and you want a different type of racer that isn't just, again, Need for Speed, Forza, or anything of the sort, Import Tuner Challenge is something you definitely cannot go wrong with. It's a game definitely worth giving at least a try. 
I think it's fun and the main thing about it is what makes it unique is the fact that you can customise them to such a high level. Game number 3 on my list today will be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. So this is a game developed by Platinum and Platinum are notoriously well known for their action games. So in terms of this game right here, is it the best Platinum game? Again, it's not, but it is unique for the fact that in Ninja Turtles, they've still got, it's although a bit clunkier than some of their other action games like Bayonetta and such, or Astral Chain even, it's not as polished or refined as those. However, there is still a pretty solid game in here. You could do much worse in terms of action games with uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan. Again, it's of a similar vein of, say, Transformers Devastation, where if you've got, you know, some young kids or something you're maybe looking to get into action games, or you're just looking for something a bit different for yourself, again, you can't go wrong with this game. It did used to have four-player co-op so you could play each of the Turtles. Unfortunately, I don't think the servers are online anymore and you're going to be a bit um, strapped to find people wanting to play a 360 game in 2023 online, but I could be wrong there. I'll maybe fact check myself there, but I don't think they're online anymore. But yeah, from all I've played, again, I think all the turtles are always on the screen in that, and it is pretty cool to, you know, run around and just have a, have a pretty solid action game right here. Again, it's not the most deep or anything, but if you like Ninja Turtles, you like the universe and are familiar with the characters, Again, can't go wrong with this one. It's not too expensive either. It's pretty cheap in terms of, you know, Ninja Turtles games as the retro ones can fetch a pretty penny. But yeah, if you're looking for something that isn't just one of the retro beat-em-ups, this is like a third-person action combat game. So this is something that could potentially be up your alley. Okay, so talked a bit about a cheaper game there with the Turtles game. It is under £10. But on the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got something around the £40 mark. And this is Dodon Patchy Resurrection. So this is a cave shooter. So in the similar vein of Akai Katana or Death Smiles and even Under Defeat HD. This one I think flies under people's radar a bit more for the sole reason that it's pricey. So the other games are around the £20 and under mark so you can get them relatively affordably. However, if you are looking for another shoot em up that is released in physical format, Dodon Patchy is possibly the game for you. Again with this one, it is um, one of those where you battle your way through it's like like Mecha Metropolis or something along those lines and uh, again with um, this there is the novice mode as well so it's something that there is something there for you if you've not really played shoot 'em ups you can t tone down the difficulty and it gives you something to work with there but this is a uh, bullet hell so this is not for the faint of heart ultimately but this could be a very good step in stone for you if that's the kind of genre you want to try as I say, this game is pretty cool, with the 360 version as well. I believe it does come with two discs, so let me have a look. I'm going to actually fact check myself. Yeah, so you also get an Arrange album. I don't know if that's a soundtrack or maybe art stuff on the <laughs> on the CD as well. But um, yeah, you also get a remixed gameplay mode in addition to that. So again, this game has plenty to offer. And although it is on the more pricier side of 360 titles, I mean, there's not many that are over a 10, or let's be real here. But this, again, is a very solid shoot 'em up. If you have, you know, a Kai Katana Death Spells and you've played those already, or even under defeat, pick this one up, give it a whirl, and you won't regret it. And finally, we come to the last game of this episode. And it is The King of Fighters 13. So the King of Fighters 13, I would personally say this is the best one in the series. I'm not, I'm not played a ton of King of Fighters 13. I mean, I played this one obviously. I mean, I'm not playing a ton of King of Fighters as a whole. I've been looking into like 15 and that, but ultimately, I bet the bullet with 13, and I do not regret it. Basically, this game is still all sprites and that, um, and it looks absolutely fantastic. It is some of the finest sprite work. Um, from what I understand, I think they were all rotoscoped or something, um, drawn over with sprites. But with this game, again, this I would say is a little bit more well known than Arcana Hearts. However, if you're into fighting games and you have not played, you know, King of Fighters series, 13 is the game to do it with. It is backwards compatible on the Series X and Xbox One as well. So I do have this game digital as it was a game of gold at one point, one point in time. But um, you've got an arcade mode, you've got a campaign, you've got tutorials as well to familiarise yourself um, with the gameplay and that. I got the tutorial achievement and it took me far longer than I'd like to admit because that tutorial is really hard. <laughs> but um, in terms of this game as well, you do have online play. I think they're still up as well, but I don't know how active it is on Xbox. 
And um, of course you got like Neo Max X attacks as well, a roster of over 30 characters. When I was playing the arcade mode as well, you do, with the fights you get as well, you get like these boss battles that come in halfway through as well, and you can unlock the characters there as well. It is just a very solid, tight, fluid fighting game. If you have not played something like Kings of Fighters, definitely pick this up. Again, it's a good alternative to things like Tekken and Street Fighters. They are the fighting games that everyone gravitates towards to naturally, and understandably so. Again, even things like Marvel vs. Capcom, I'd say, is kind of in the same field of like King of Fighters in the sense that they're a bit more obscure. Not everyone in the general public knows about them. But, you know, core gamers typically do. <laughs> but with King of Fighters 13, yeah, this one also has a second disc if you were to pick this one up. Um, I don't think it's a soundtrack. I think it's like a digital art thing. Yeah, art CD as well it comes with. Uh, so you can see that's first there for some reason. Oh, wait, never mind. Bonus <laughs> art CDs there. I unfortunately don't have the poster for this game, which is very disappointing. But you'll have seen this in a CEX roulette one time when I bought it there. But, uh... Yeah, definitely give this game a shot. It's probably the single best fighter on the 360, I would say. Hand on heart. It is such a good game. Again, uh, I'll, I'll gush on and just keep repeating myself. But yeah, definitely pick this one up if you can. First game I am going to recommend today is one that you can get physical, but um, it depends if you want to grab it or not. So it is Alien Breed Trilogy here. So this is a trilogy of arcade games right here. Pretty much what they are is they're like top down um, shooters, so they're like twin stick shooters where you, you know, this kind of like twin stick shooter because you kind of, it's overhead, you walk around, you aim with the right stick and then you shoot with a trigger. But um, yeah, they're pretty uh, fun games actually from what I've played. I've not played the whole trilogy yet, but um, this is just one way of getting them. On the Ar Xbox Arcade, they are around £3 or so each. Well, this physical copy is probably just going to keep climbing up in value because CEX in the moment sell it for about £8 on eBay. I've seen it go from anywhere between 15 and 25 roughly. So yeah, this one's going to probably become a bit more elusive, especially when they are delisted because more people will want to try them because it will bring attention to them. So yeah, um, I would say if you just want to try them, pick them up. So back to what the games are about. Um, it is uh, just a trilogy of games, three arcade shooter titles and... So you've got two of them, Alien Breed Evolution, Alien Breed 2 Assault, and Alien Breed 3 um, Descent. So yeah, as I say, it's a trilogy, there is a cohesive story within there as well. And you can, you know, with, with it there is like exploration in that, so it is pretty good. And if you put on the harder difficulty, you know, you're being swarmed by a range of different aliens in that. So yeah, it's very good fun. I'd say definitely give it a shot. Um, they shouldn't take you too long to beat as well, you know. Oh, that's a good thing with Xbox 360 arcade games, they are quite respectful of your time. So yeah, definitely give this one a bat. The second game I'm going to talk about today is Burnout Crash. So what is Burnout Crash? So it's kind of inspired by the crash mode in, um, say, Burnout 3, for example, where you just pile up cars, cause as much carnage as possible. Um, it's great fun, actually. I've, uh, when I've played this, so you do get three different modes to try it when you are playing it in the main story mode or the campaign even as you do have like six different um, overall zones or intersections I think they call them even um, but with that you get pilot mode which is just you want to pile up as many cars as possible you know boost the multiplier get as many points as possible because basically points is uh, cash you can get points by destroying as much stuff as possible specifically vehicles have certain values of cash and there's like buildings and that explosives and everything and uh yeah that mounts up and you get more points based on that and as you you know get more points from that you then increase a multiplier which then gives you things like super features and that which brings in things like tornadoes um snowstorms um things like that and um bigger vehicles for you to challenge or ambulances come in to give you an extra life you know there's so much that um so many layers to it so with that game, it is quite strategic as well. You've got to kind of plan what you're going to do in a sense because there's, you know, objectives that get you stars, kind of like a mobile game uh, without all the adverts, thankfully. <laughs> so it is a full package, this game, and it is pretty fun. But yeah, um, the way that you go about, you know, doing that, as I say with the other modes, there's one where you just want to blow everything up basically and you get your multiplier up by doing that. And there's another mode where, you know, you get, I think it's like Pizza Driver or something. There's a spinning wheel and then you get like a random thing like cars go faster or um, cars are magnetized and they come closer to you. And then you can get more points and 
explosions and things like that and increase your alt platter that way to then get better results get the more lives you have at the end the better your super feature they call it the multiplier is better and you get more points off of it so yeah um, there are some quite you know strategic layers to it you've got a plan and make sure that you don't just let other cars pass through because that's the objective blow as many things up as possible make sure cars do not pass through you so yeah, that game is good fun um, it's one that it's about six pounds on the Xbox store as well so it won't run you too much money and you can get some quality entertainment time out of it for sure um, although it doesn't sound like there's tons of content in it, you know, the, you'll replay levels quite a lot. There is replayability, especially if you don't get all the stars first time around. You know, there's plenty of um, avenues for you to go down. So yeah, definitely give that one a shot. The third game I'm going to discuss today is one that is playable on the Xbox One and Series X. However, you can only buy on the 360 store, which is why I'm going to highlight it here today. And it is a classic arcade racer called Daytona USA. If you don't know what Daytona USA is, it's one of the iconic like, arcade racers of the 90s. Um, it's got the Daytona theme song that everybody knows. Um, but yeah, that's a, it's a fantastic racing game. Sure, there's not too much content in it, but considering the time frame it came out, it was a 90s game. Um, it was released in the arcades and then later ported to the Sega Saturn. But I'd say this is the best way you can play it on home console or anywhere else because I do not believe it is currently available on anything like PlayStation, Switch or even PC. I'll double check, but I'll fact check myself. But with that, as I say, the, you can play it on the Series X, but you can't go on the Series X Xbox store and buy the game for some reason. You can only buy it on the 360 Marketplace. I actually plugged in my 360 one day, bought it, and then installed it on my Series X to play it. But yeah, it's a classic racer. You can't go wrong with Daytona. Um, the, the, you know, just drifting around in that feels good. There's challenges in that within the game as well for you to do, as well as the general races. And there are achievements in that as well, leaderboards and whatnot. Um, I believe they are still up as of recording. But yeah, my style of Daytona, as I say, not much else to add other than it is a classic racer. I highly recommend it. It is a good fun one to, if you're wanting a bit of like retro racing or you don't have to invest too much time into it or anything like that, you know, that'll be a good one to pick up. And as I say, it runs you a couple of pounds, so it's not going to break the bank and it's playable on modern systems, but you have to buy it on the 360 store. So make sure you, you know, seize the opportunity to, you know, grab a Daytona USA on the Xbox. Following that, the next game I'm going to discuss here as well is Frogger Hyper Arcade Edition. So with Frogger Hyper Arcade Edition, I think it is in a similar vein of say Pac-Man Championship Edition, where they probably saw what Namco had done, so Konami thought, huh, we can do that with Frogger. And admittedly, it's not, not as good or as refined as Pac-Man Championship Edition, but if you're a fan of the Frogger Arcade game, which, hands up, here I am, <laughs> that would be an arcade one-up machine I would love to have. However, they've only released it in America, so I guess I'm not getting one. But that aside, um, it's got a multitude of gameplay modes. Um, there is a paint mode that I was playing um, just before recording this as well, where you you know hop on tiles to paint a picture, which I thought was quite inventive and quite fun. Um, there's this um, competitive multiplayer mode where you go tiles and then you make it to the end of the level, how there's multiple bits. You know, ma mark as many tiles along the way as possible, and then it can go on multiplayer as well. So that's another feature this game has. But yeah, that's quite a fun mode. I can imagine that being a ton of fun locally as well. But yeah, with that as well, you do have the classic Frogger gameplay. So you do have classic controls, and you also have hyper controls. With Frogger, you you normally have to just tap the button to hop or move the stick if you're playing the arcade, I suppose. But with hyper controls, if you change that, you can just do continuous hops, which that, that messed my mind up. I'm used to just tapping the button. But yeah, it's got a good enough variety for what it is. Um, it's not been reviewed the best, but I think that's mainly just because it is just Frogger, ultimately. Um, it is a relatively thin package, come to think of it. However, if you like Frogger and you want a different gameplay variation of it, I would highly recommend giving that a shot. There is also a mode where you can change the skin. I was playing Dancing Stage, um, yeah, I think it's Dan Dancing Stage Euro Mix um, in Europe, but Dance Dance Revolution in America. But yeah, I was playing with that skin. You can unlock like Castlevania skin. You can also unlock um, a Contra skin if you enter a code. 
So yeah, there is plenty of like style variations you can go for. You can play standard Frogger, gives you your fix. And again, this game only costs about six pounds. So you can get like Arcade Archives Frogger, but that's just bog standard Frogger on say modern platforms. But with Hyper Edition, I think that's got a bit more style to it, a bit more variety. The music's pretty all right as well. I cannot complain about that. I did enjoy some of the tunes I heard. So yeah, definitely give that one a shot as well. If I'm you're looking for say just a classic arcade game, with a little spice to it just to make it that bit more interesting. Finally, the last game I'm going to talk about today as well is South Park Tower Defense uh, Let's Go Play or something. <laughs> it's a weird title, but yeah, it is what it says on the tin basically. It's South Park, it's Tower Defense, it's good fun. So it is relatively simplistic, it's not like the most um, complex of games or anything like that. But I do like a good tower defense game here and there. I, I mean, I've got like 80 hours on Blinds Tower Defense on Steam. Uh, I would love a Switch version of that. They brought it to Xbox, so the groundwork's there. But I'm not talking about that. We have Sour pa um, South Park, sorry. Uh, there's a tower defense game, so you get different waves of enemies. You fight around different locations in the South Park town. And yeah, you're just saving the day. So you do have different enemy types like um, gingers, uh, cows, um, Mongolians. <laughs> yeah, it's typical South Park and as you play as well you do unlock things like clips of the show and whatnot. Um, you get like character entries and things like that which is really cool. So there's plenty of you to go back and look at as well and you can of course play on higher difficulties. You do get some achievements for beating things on specific um, difficulties as well. So there is that incentive to go back for it if you say want to do achievement hunting to give you that replay ability. Not only that as well, there is some achievements for getting, you know, higher ranks as well. So again, there is incentive to do it if you just want to get an achievement for doing so. But yeah, basically with this game, what you do for the tower defense aspects of it is you throw snowballs. And you just run around, you know, press an A and you can hold it to charge it to throw more powerful snowballs. So of course the boys all have different stats, say Stan runs a bit faster, Cartman, you know, is a bit slower but has more powerful attacks, you know, things like that. So yeah, it's a pretty standard affair with the tower defense game, but it's a charming one, it's fun, it's got that South Park flair to it. And yeah, I mean, I love Stick of Truth, for example. I would say it's not as good as that in terms of quality, but if you want a decent South Park game or something different that isn't just an RPG, that game you definitely cannot go wrong with. And, um, it, you know, it just adds some more variety to good South Park games as opposed to the trash you used to get back in the day on PlayStation and N64. But yeah, I would highly recommend that one as well. First game on the list today is Blue Dragon. So you may be wondering, why Blue Dragon? Well, this is a really good JRPG on the Xbox 360 that a lot of people have slept on. Um, one big thing about this game, though, is it's got a lot of discs. I think it's got four or three. Yeah, it's got quite a few discs. So pretty much on the Series X, so the best way to play this is the fact that you install it or buy it digitally and then you don't have to go about swapping the discs. Because even if you install a physical copy, as long as one disc is inserted, it installs the full game. So you can just play it seamlessly in 4K nonetheless with better load times as you can do for all the Series X games. But not only that, this is a really good um, JRPG where, again, a lot of people did sleep on it, but it's something that is quite unique. It's relatively simple in terms of gameplay and such, but in that sense, you know, it's easy to get into. You, it's got a very good storyline. The characters are pretty good in this game as well. All designed by Akira Toriyama is in addition to that. So if you like Dragon Ball and that art style or even Dragon Quest, this game visually is going to appeal to you as well. Not only that, it's got a killer soundtrack, <laughs> one of the best boss theme songs of all time. I've been watching my brother play it recently and yeah, it just runs like a dream on that platform. Easy to play, easy to pick up, and that is the best way to play this game. The second game I'm going to talk about today is Mirror's Edge. So this game is all, it's basically a remaster when you play it on the Series X. Again, higher frame rate, I believe it's up to 60 frames per second. I don't, I can't quite remember if it supports up to 120, I don't think so. But um, yeah, with this game, yes, you can play it in 4K as well. It runs a lot smoother, it looks better. This game was actually optimized for the Xbox Series consoles. So it's one of those where you can play it and get the most out of it. It's rather than longer loan times as you do for the regular games. A lot of people have played this game, but if you haven't, it is a first person like action platformer type game where you're doing parkour, free running, those types of things. And the level designs are very creative, they're very fun, and just jumping around and climbing everywhere in this game is an absolute joy and I cannot recommend it enough. 
But that's what I'm saying, it's like this is the best way to play Mirror's Edge because even on PC and that, a lot of the optimizations were not transferred over. So this is the best way to play Mirror's Edge and you won't have that on PlayStation either as it used to be on PlayStation, uh, the subscription service, but it was only playable via cloud. So of course it was a hampered version of the game. This way you're getting the best gameplay experience, it looks better, runs better, it's got all the bells and whistles, there is no reason not to play it on the threes on the Series X and Series S consoles. Okay, the third game here, uh, it's kind of apparent I'm a fan of this series. <laughs> it is Sonic Unleashed. The reason I put Sonic Unleashed over other games is although the other games are still perfectly playable on the 360 and that, as is this game to be fair, but it did have performance issues and it just, it was one of those games that was ahead of its time in terms of its scope, um, the graphics and everything. It was a good looking game then, but it did not run as optimally as it could. So if you're playing another version of this game, then you're going to have a wor worse gameplay experience. Playing this on the newer range of Xbox consoles, that gives you, you know, enhanced visuals, enhanced frame rate, so 4K, 60fps, and all the performance issues that used to occur in this game are no more. This runs like a dream on Xbox. So I highly recommend this as well for the fact Sonic Unleashed, the daytime levels, was the, you know, the birth of the boost formula for the Sonic games. And yeah, there's a formula that has been pretty popular, I've enjoyed it, although I think it's gone a little stale in recent times. But with the rejuvenation in Sonic Frontiers, it's still a, it's still, you know, run its course, I think. Or at least in terms of, you know, the level design in that game. It wasn't the greatest, but it was fun, pick up and play, snappy and fast. In this, you've got longer haul levels designed really well. There is a lot of different paths you can take. And as I say, no performance hiccups or anything like that, it runs perfectly. I'm not, you know, it's so smooth that I, I just forget that, you know, there ever was performance issues in this game. So yeah, highly recommend Sonic Unleashed on the Xbox Series consoles. Although if you don't like the Werehog levels, I don't blame you because I don't either. <laughs> okay, so this one is a bit more of an obvious one. It's going to be a few games recommended. The Call of Duty series. I picked out five of the main games that I always recommend, you know, people play if they're going to pick up COD. I'd say the best two out of this pile I would say the original Black Ops and Modern Warfare 2. Because um, the thing is with these, like although they're playable on PC, they rarely ever get price drops on, say, um, Steam. And if they do, they're still quite expensive. But with these you know, games, you can find them pretty cheap. Everyone wants rid of them. Sure enough, as of late, they have went up a bit because of the main reason they're in this list. The online servers have been fixed. So it's not filled with hackers and that you can actually play in the multiplayer. You know, it's pretty nice actually. But you, with this as well, unlike PC and such, you can still do like split screen locally on an Xbox Series console. So if you've got a second controller, install the game, boom, it's like the 360 days, except it runs better, it looks better, you know, the usual. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, it's like these online servers for these games have been fixed, so now they do run a lot better. And as, you know, you can find them in charity shops, car boot sales, everyone had Call of Duty games on the 360 at one point or another. But yeah, that's what the main thing, because Black Ops 2 is one of the best ones for multiplayer. Original Black Ops, great zombies. Modern Warfare 2, great multiplayer, and it's got Spec Ops as well, which is a great time to do locally or online. Uh, it's kind of Modern Warfare 4, Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4 rather, <laughs> that's got great online. And also World at War again, that's got cracking zombies. So yeah, there's a range of games for, to meet different needs, but there's a range of options here. So if you're interested in zombies multiplayer, again, any one of these games will probably do you pretty well. Cool, that was some recommendations for games to play on the Xbox Series consoles. As I say, these games are some of the best examples of games to pick out and play specifically on your Series X if you want to play something just to enhance the experience and make it easier and more accessible. Because most of these games usually just plug them in and install and yeah, it's pretty much just the bog standard game. But these games are better played on these consoles for reasons that you don't need to be changing discs, better performance, and it mitigates issues the original releases had. So yeah, um, if you did enjoy the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. And of course, there are other Xbox 360 videos, so please check out the playlist if you're interested in that. Or if you're interested in general game collecting and all that and game hunting, I've got that covered as well. But yeah, as I say, please like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below if there's any games you would recommend to play on the Series X for any specific reason, and maybe I'll take a look at them in the future. But thanks for watching, and goodbye.